Hello and welcome to the first lecture about the Cold War. Today I'm going to talk about the origins of the Cold War. I'm going to discuss three questions, which are what were the Cold War, how did it happen, and why did it happen? Primarily, what were the causes of the Cold War? Uh, what were the origins of the Cold War? But in order to address that question, first we need to understand exactly what the Cold War was and how it came about. So first, what was the Cold War? Um, the Cold War was a geopolitical and an ideological struggle between two sides, primarily between the two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, but also between two blocks of countries, um, the Western allies, the United States, the UK, France, etc., and the Eastern Bloc, which is the Soviet Union, Poland, Hungary, etc. Um, and it was both ideological and geopolitical. By that I mean that there was an ideological emphasis. On the one side you had communism, On the Soviet side you had communism, which was both an economic and political system that uh, differed greatly from the ideology on the West, which was capitalism and liberal democracy, which were an economic and political system which were quite opposed to communism. So there was very definitely an ideological element to the Cold War where ideology did matter, it was important. However, there was also a geopolitical element. By that I mean that the Cold War was partially a struggle for empire, just as there had been struggles for empire throughout the preceding centuries in Europe. Um, part of it was over control of Germany and Central Europe, and then over control of Asia. Uh, so in many ways, this was a good old-fashioned battle for power. So the Soviet Union was both ideological and geopolitical, and as an IB student, you need to start forming an opinion about which was more important. Uh, what were the origins of the Cold War? Well, for our purposes, it's best to turn back to 1917 and the Russian Revolution to find the origins of the Cold War. Uh, most historians will agree that the Cold War began either in 45, 46, or 47, but that the seeds of the Cold War had been planted much earlier during and just after the Russian Revolution, during the Russian Revolution and the Russian Civil War. So in 1917, as I'm sure you know, the Bolsheviks seized power in Russia after a six or seven months of a provisional government. So the Tsar had been overthrown and the ruling monarchy, the Tsar of Russia, had been overthrown. The Bolsheviks eventually killed the royal family, which of course unnerved many of the royal families in Europe who were largely related to the Romanovs, that is the Russian dynasty. And uh, the Bolsheviks seized power and they declared that they were part of a worldwide class struggle, a worldwide proletarian revolution. And the Bolsheviks, under the leadership of Vladimir Lenin in 1917, suggested that other countries, such as Germany, the UK, the United States, etc., the advanced capitalist nations would follow with a worldwide revolution um, and that the ruling classes, the capitalist classes, uh, would be overthrown just as they had been in Russia. Well, naturally this was quite worrying to the ruling classes and the capitalist classes throughout Western Europe and the United States, so they felt threatened by the Bolshevik Revolution. And these are the seeds of the Cold War. In 1918, the United Kingdom, the UK, Japan, Czech, the Czech legation, the United States, etc., sent armies into Russia to side with the whites, or that is, with the nobles, with the old ruling aristocracy um, in the Russian Civil War to fight against the communists. And you can imagine this caused, uh, well, it caused a lot of bloodshed, a lot of violence, as you can imagine, and it caused a lot of fear amongst the communists and their leadership in Moscow and uh, Petrograd or St. Petersburg or what would later become Leningrad. Uh, the, the Reds, or the communist side of the Russian Civil War, eventually won in a long and difficult struggle and drove out those armies that had come in from the UK, the US, and Japan, etc. And uh, 
the Reds or the communists felt that they had been attacked, which was correct, and that they felt encircled by the capitalist powers. And they felt that the capitalist powers were trying to strangle them, you could say, to encircle them and to overthrow the Communist Party in Russia. And uh, therefore, you have two sort of competing ideologies of the, the seeds of the Cold War, the origins of the Cold War. On the one hand, the capitalist powers feel like they are being threatened by this declared communist revolution and this intended uh, worldwide proletariat revolution that was going to overthrow the capitalist powers. On the other hand, the communists feel in, encircled and they feel that the capitalists are out to get them. Uh, there's validity to both sides of the argument and as an IB student you need to start to form an opinion about um, which side of the argument you support. But these were the seeds or the origins of the Cold War all the way back in 1918. Um, throughout the 1920s, of course, the Soviet Union and Russia and all of Europe went through many upheavals. And uh, once the communist dictator Joseph Tal Stalin uh, takes power and uh, solidifies his grip on the Soviet Union in the late 1920s, uh, he declares a system called socialism in one country, whereby he says, we're not going to abandon the worldwide revolution, but we're going to focus on building communism in the Soviet Union first. And uh, he focuses on heavy industrialization of the Soviet Union, um, eliminating his enemies, and on preparing for what he sees as the inevitable conflict with the capitalist powers, primarily Germany, which of course happens, and the Soviet Union is pretty well industrialized by 1941 when Nazi Germany attacks. And uh, because Nazi Germany is such a terrible threat, both the United States and the United Kingdom uh, ally themselves with the Soviet Union in World War II. And during World War II, the US, the UK, and the USSR are wartime allies. Uh, they're known as the Big Three. Um, they are led, of course, by dominating personalities of Winston Churchill in Great Britain, um, Franklin Roosevelt in the United States, and Joseph Stalin in the USSR. Uh, these big three seem to get along well enough during the war because they have this common problem, which is Nazi Germany and Adolf Hitler. And they uh, come together to win the war. And it, it becomes increasingly obvious that they're going to win the war throughout 1944, late 1944, and into 1945. And um, throughout this period, there are a series of conferences involving various levels of ministers and officials within the governments of the USSR, the UK, and the USA. And um, this comes to a head in Yalta in February of 1945, when the big three, Stalin, Roosevelt, and Churchill, meet. And by now, it is clear that the alliance is going to defeat Nazi Germany, and they begin to plan for post-war Europe and a post-war world. It's generally felt that at Yalta, which is a very important conference, um, that the feelings are pretty good, that the three big powers get along with each other. Uh, Roosevelt, in particular, seems to have some fondness for Stalin. Uh, Churchill is more reserved in his enthusiasm for Stalin. They talk about Poland, they talk about Germany, they talk about how to win the war and what they will do after the war. They insist on an unconditional surrender. Um, the United States, of course, is involved in a Pacific War, quite a bloody uh, war against Japan, and the United States wants help from Stalin in its war against Japan. Uh, Stalin commits that after the Germany is defeated, three months after that, the USSR will help the United States in its war with Japan. So the feelings at Yalta are pretty good. The three sides, the three big countries seem to get along pretty well. Um, that's in February of 1945. By July of 1945, uh, many major events have happened, of course, including the end of the war in Europe 
and the death of Franklin Roosevelt, the President of the United States. And, and the next big post-war conference or post-European war conference is in Potsdam, which is a suburb of Berlin. And at this conference, it becomes clear that Winston Churchill would not be reelected. He was not reelected, and instead, the UK government sends Clement Attlee of the Labour Party to be the British delegate to the conference. So now, the big three at Potsdam are no longer Stalin, Churchill, and Roosevelt, but they are Stalin, Attlee, and Truman. And Attlee and Truman simply do not have the kind of weight or reputation in Stalin's mind that the predecessors, Churchill and Roosevelt, had. And Stalin becomes a little bit more imperious, you could say, and um, more demanding. And of course, by this time in July of 1945, it's very evident to British and American uh, delegates, politicians, that Stalin has broken many of the promises that he made in February and the tensions between the US, the UK on one side and the Soviet Union on the other are much more intense or much more serious. So sometime between February of 1945 when you had Yalta and July of 1945 when you had Potsdam, the relations between the two sides deteriorates. So you could certainly make an argument that the Cold War began sometime in 1945.